What's going on, everybody? I'm Howard Bender from Fantasy Alarm, and it's time now for your week four fantasy baseball stock watch. Player values are rising and falling like commodities on the stock market, and you need to figure out for your fantasy baseball teams which players are rising, which ones are falling, who's worth adding on the waiver wire, and who's worth dropping from your rosters. So let's get to it with a little three up, three down, and we start with your fantasy baseball risers. Arizona Diamondbacks starting pitcher Slade Ciccone, number one on my list here this week. This 24-year-old right-hander is a big old pitcher, and he looks real, real nice. He's got a mid-90s fastball. He's got a great split finger, and he drops in a really nice slider as well. Not too big on his changeup, but he's still working on that. He debuted this past weekend with a quality start against the San Francisco Giants, limiting them to just two runs on two hits, through six innings with Merrill Kelly and Ryan Nelson, both on the IL. We're looking to Ciccone to be starting for the, at least the next couple of weeks here while the other pitchers get healthy. His next outings coming up against a very strikeout prone Seattle Mariners team. So I'm looking to get Ciccone into my lineups as fast as possible. Also on the riser list here from the Baltimore Orioles, it's Heston Kerstad, the outfielder. Listen, this Norfolk team, the AAA affiliate of the Orioles, is packed. So we're probably going to be talking about a lot of Orioles this week, uh, this year, actually. This week, Kerstad, he's up, and he's already got 10 home runs in the minors with a 349 batting average. We've got Austin Hayes on the IL, and we've got Ryan Mountcastle banged up. That's going to push Ryan O'Hearn over to first base, and that's going to open up both the outfield and the DH spot for more starts from Kerstad. So if you can add him, be sure to do it. Now, again, this Orioles team is completely packed, and we don't know how long Kerstad's going to be up. If he hits, he likely stays. So be patient with him for a little bit, but don't overinvest too much. And then finally, how about outfielder Dylan Carlson from the St. Louis Cardinals? We've been talking about this in the stock watch now for a couple of weeks, so keep this in mind. Victor Scott already demoted. Jordan Walker batting 164 right now, so he could be on his way out. Dylan Carlson begins his rehab assignment this week, which means he could be called up as early as this weekend's games. So Jordan Walker could be on the way out. Dylan Carlson would then find himself into full-time playing for the Cardinals in the outfield. Now, understand, he's a 20-home run bat with a middling average, so don't get crazy. But regular at-bats is what we're looking for here right now, and Dylan Carlson could be next on the list. Three down, let's talk about some of our fallers, and it begins with Jonathan India, a second baseman out of the Cincinnati Reds team. This one kind of hurts me because I feel like he's squandering a golden opportunity. When Matt McClain went down, Jonathan India went from part-time DH to full-time second baseman, and the dude's just not doing it right now. 174 batting average, absolutely no power. He's losing playing time to Santiago Espinal, who's a slick fielding fielder who can get the job done with the bat at the bottom of the lineup. So Jonathan India on his way down. I'm not saying drop him yet, but put him onto the bench for the time being and hope that he can kick it into high gear. It's Great American Small Park, so why shouldn't he be hitting for some power? Keep an eye on him indeed. Next, we're going to go to Tristan Cassis, first baseman for the Boston Red Sox. I don't usually like to talk about injured players right now, but a recent MRI on Cassis's rib injury indicates that he could be out for a real length of time. That's going to be a huge bummer right now because what we're looking at is possibly at least two weeks and seeing what happens there. But while the Boston Red Sox patch it with guys like Bobby Dahlbeck or Rob Refsnyder, keep in mind that on May 1st, most veterans who have signed minor league deals, who are auditioning for uh, other teams out there, they end up having opt-out clauses in their contracts, which means that if they're not on the big league roster by May 1st, they can get released, which means Boston could start looking outside the organization, and then that they give no reason to rush Cassis back from this injury. So be very careful of him. If you can stash him on the IL, great. If not, you might want to consider uh, 
a little bit of a demotion from your roster. And then finally here, Nolan Jones, outfielder for the Colorado Rockies. Let me remind you all that the stock watch here is not just about a player who's performing well or a player who's performing bad. It focuses a lot on public perception. And those who drafted Nolan Jones took him in the fifth or sixth round of their drafts, and they were expecting big things. This guy's got 20 home run, 30 stolen base potential, so you know that the upside is there. And as we've always said, any hitter who bats half his games in Colorado always deserves another look. So right now what we're doing is, is that with the way that Jones is playing, the 38% strikeout rate, the horrible, horrible batting average, the lack of power that we're really seeing from him, his owners are getting super antsy. I've already seen a bunch in the Fantasy Alarm Discord of people asking whether or not they should drop Nolan Jones. This is a perfect buy low opportunity. As the public perception starts to go down, your buy low opportunity starts to go up. And Nolan Jones is a quality guy. Definitely a quality guy. Don't let the slow start shake you. Hold them on your bench if you have them already. If you don't, start floating some of those low ball offers and see if you can get him for the stretch run. That's going to do it for the week four fantasy baseball stock watch. Full article with full detailed write-ups sitting over at fantasyalarm.com right now. So get yourself over there and check out more of what I've got to offer here. I'm Howard Bender from Fantasy Alarm. We'll catch you next time.